activity, but he was only able to be here for a few days, and he's now headed back to Buffalo. If I'm not mistaken, he is in Buffalo, uh, and he is asking that we will continue to pray for him as he and his wife and his family uh, try to transition from being on the mission field uh, to coming back here to the States. Uh, and uh, he got his daughter uh, settled into the University of Boston Medical School. And so let's please be in prayer for his daughter, Sarah, and for that family. And as uh, uh, Minister White is indicating, we are now live streaming. And so we uh, say good morning to those of you who are uh, joining us in the land of internet. Uh, we are, are the New Jerusalem Baptist Church, and we're located here in the Chapel Oaks community. Some call it Capitol Heights, 1219 Dunbar Oaks Drive. Uh, I'm Pastor Henderson, and I've served as the under-shepherd of this ranch of Zion for the past 30 plus years. Uh, we would love to have you to come and worship with us uh, and to uh, cast lots with us even if the Lord leads you to do so. Certainly uh, there's a lot to be done and not just a lot to be done, but uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, uh, we pray that you will come and hear. Uh, for that is our primary purpose for existence, and that is to share Jesus with the world. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, who hung, bled, suffered, and died on Calvary's cross for our sins, that as many as would believe on God's Son, Jesus, shall receive the gift of eternal life and become joint heirs with Christ Jesus and know for sure that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And uh, how shall we be saved, the scripture puts it, if we neglect so great a salvation? So please, I, I, uh, I invite you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you will give it some serious consideration and to also come and join us here with our regular worship service each Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We also have Sunday school on Sunday mornings at 9.30. Bring your children out uh, where they too can learn about Jesus. And then we have our uh, prayer service each Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, and uh, after the summer is over with, we will be reconvening our Bible study uh, that we also have on Wednesday evening in addition to prayer service. So, uh, last but not least, we want to acknowledge our visitors. We have a few, few visitors in our midst this morning. We want to ask that you please stand that we might extend to you some additional words of welcome as we continue on in our service. Amen. We have some visitors that choose not to stand, and that's all right. Uh, they're, 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 they're visitors, but they're not strangers. Amen. I just want to let you know that we are happy to have you here this morning, and uh, certainly uh, we have to have our visiting preacher in the uh, pulpit with us this morning, so I'm going to call upon him uh, to come at this time and say good morning to us and to introduce his family to us. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Amen. Thank you to uh, Pastor Henderson and to First Lady Henderson and to the deacons. Of course, my family and I are visiting here from Raleigh, North Carolina. My mother-in-law is here with us from Columbia, South Carolina. They can just stand. My children, uh, Leah Dickerson and Stephen Dickerson, Veronica Dickerson and Daisy Miller. Amen. Thank them for being with me Amen. on today. Amen. 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 My wife and I are celebrating our anniversary on today, actually, uh, 11 years today. So I want to wish her a happy anniversary. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, brother. Amen. And so uh, he is going to be uh, our, our preacher for uh, this morning, and 
he's no stranger to us even in that area. Uh, he has uh, shared the word of God with us before, and we were blessed and encouraged by the last time that he shared the word with us. And I'm looking forward to it with joyful anticipation to hearing from him uh, later on this afternoon or, or later on in the service. Uh, Deacon Birch had something that... In fellowship. Amen. Amen. We'd like for all of you to come out and all oh, men. You don't have to be a member yet. Come out and join us. Maybe you can learn something. We hope you come up and show up on the good foot. Okay, so um, uh, we're trying to get our men's fellowship one, uh, back on track again. So uh, this third Saturday of July, uh, let's keep in mind that we're going to try once again. Amen. To uh, get it jump started, uh, Sister White. Praise the Lord. And, and on, on that note, I'm reminded that l last week uh, uh, we, Sister Henderson and I, celebrated our 48th wedding anniversary, Brother Dickinson. Uh, and uh, then last Saturday, Pastor celebrated his 73rd birthday. And you all were so generous. You were so nice. You were so loving. And you Y'all got me pies and cakes and more pies and cake. Uh, uh, Sister uh, Donna Burton uh, uh, sent me a pie that was so fresh it was still hot when I got home. <laughs> My goodness, and, and 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 did did we enjoy it? Uh, Sister Gre Sister Green uh, sent us home with a whole pan. Of ooey gooey that was now goney. <laughs> uh, I had some sweet potato pies, and I, I, I tell you, and, and I got all the proof. <laughs> but thank you once again so much. Uh, we really enjoyed it. Uh, some of you gave me some monetary gifts uh, that I am. Uh, very most thankful for and may God bless you uh, for your generosity uh, that that's all I have sister, sister Birch has. <coughs> okay on on this coming Friday at 6 30 it's coming Friday at 6 30 uh, uh, we'll be having choir rehearsal uh, always glad to see brother Higgs brother Higgs uh, Brother Higgs and I go back way back. And, uh, Brother Higgs uh, go back to when I was a young man trying to respond to a call. And, and God, he was one of the people that God was using me, using to direct me and guide me into my ministry. He didn't know it at the time. But he was as instrumental as anyone. And I was trying to respond to my calling and get me on the right track. And uh, it was it was in the way of, I had never sung in a choir. And uh, Bethesda had called upon Brother Higgs to start a choir that would relieve the choirs during the summertime. They called it the Vacation Relief Choir. And Pastor said, everybody who didn't sing in a choir uh, he would like to see just come and join that choir and be a blessing and give relief to the regular choir. Well, he, he was talking right to me. I sure enough had never sung in a choir uh, and uh, went to Brother Higgs. Uh, I'm wrestling with my calling. And, and uh, uh, Brother Higgs said, uh, so, sir, uh, what, what voice do you sing? <laughs> I never sung in a choir. Wow, what do you mean with voice? My voice. <laughs> That's what. And, and so he said, well, 
let me hear you sing. And I remember just like it was yesterday. And, and, and I, I sung with all the fervency and enthusiasm that I was feeling uh, in, in the weight of the call being up on me. And I just loved the Lord. And I was singing from my heart. And he picked up on it. He, and he said, well, <laughs> if nothing else, you sing loud. <laughs> I say that's good enough for me. <laughs> and and, and he, he, with that vacation release choir, he taught us some songs of Zion that were as sacred and as were as ministering to me at the time. He, he, he didn't know. He was ministering to me with, with those songs and guiding me along the way. Uh, uh, one, one, he, he taught us the one, Ezekiel saw the wheel, way in the middle, of it, and uh, big wheel turned by grace, a little wheel turned by the grace of God. I, 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 we just, just, uh, we, we used to march in, and I, allow me just to march down memory lane again. We used to march in on God of our Father, uh, and just all those songs were just speaking to my heart, Brother Hitch. I, and God was using you, and you didn't know it. Amen. But I, I thank God for it. Uh, and all that to say that uh, now down through the years, Brother Higgs has gotten to the point where, where his health has just been putting him to the test. Oh, you think you tough, huh? And he, he has been confronted uh, the best way to put it is he, he, he's a modern day Job <laughs> as it relates to uh, some of the difficulties that he's been going through and he stands he stands as a testimony uh, that the same God that delivered Job amen he, he's there delivering him and I just thank God for his faithfulness and the way that he has uh, Bless us here in New Jerusalem. I, I, we we tried to we tried to pay him a little something for directing our choir. And a few months ago, he came up to me and said, "Pastor, would you please stop giving me a check?" I said, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I was great. I, I felt kind of bad about it. We, we really wanted to be a blessing to him. But that's the kind of spirit he is. Just, just, thank you, Brother Higgs. We appreciate you, man. Uh, that That's all that we have in the way of announcements for now. Uh, I'm, I've been taking up much too much time. We need to stay on the night of the day. I'm going to look to our choir at this time for a selection.
Praise the Lord. Y'all made Brother Higgs earn his tail now. Hey, hey. Bless the Lord. He's still talking. Thank you, Brother Higgs. Thank you, choir. Thank you for that message and the song. We come to the time of our offering, and as we prepare to take our offering, let us remember that offering time is not a social time. Uh, it is a time of worship, and we do it reverently. We do it as unto the Lord. Those of you who are tithing uh, today, we ask that you please not put your tithe offering in the regular offering basket, but that you will hold your tithe offering until the proper time. If you need an offering envelope, <laughs> if, you, if you need an offering envelope, uh, our usher servant for this morning, uh, Brother Neil, Jenkins will be glad to get one to you. Uh, however, you sh should be able to find an offering envelope in the pocket, the sheet seat in front of you. Um, but if not, once again, uh, Brother Neil Jenkins will gladly get one to you if you will hold your hand up and keep it up long enough for him to acknowledge you. Uh, our young deacon in training who we're trying to get ready for ordination he, he too uh, is in the fast lane right now he uh, recently got married he recently had a baby he in, in the process of going on another uh, tour of duty in the military and uh, through it all he's still standing tall still trusting god and the lord is still blessing his wife and his baby Amen. Uh, little Miss Brielle, that voice that you see here helping us along and hallelujah and for us. Uh, it, it, it's his daughter. Amen. That just keeps him smiling all the time, both he and uh, his wife, uh, Brianna. Who's also, hold up your hand, Brianna. Let him know that, that his wife is here. Amen. Don't. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't, don't get too excited about that tall, handsome fellow. He's accounted for. He's taken. <laughs> Amen. So at this time, uh, he's coming to receive the regular offering. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. And running over shall men give unto your bosom. And the same measure with which he measure. It shall be measured to you again. He who sow it sparingly shall reap also sparingly.
fire preparedness to come uh, for just briefly following the next selection from the choir, the next voice that you will hear will be that of the man of God, Brother Stephen Dickerson, who is a faithful servant of God, who is no stranger to us, and uh, let's receive him prayerfully uh, as he comes to share with us the word of God.
Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is good to be here on this morning. Also giving honor to your pastor, Pastor Henderson, to First Lady Henderson, to Deacon Harris and Deacon White, to all of the leadership and membership and fellowship of this great church, New Jerusalem, to Minister White on the keyboards. We bring you greetings this morning from Union Baptist Church Amen. in Durham, North Carolina, where my pastor is the Reverend Prince Rainey Rivers. Amen. If you would bow with me in prayer, if you will. Lord God, it is preaching time. I ask that you take me out of myself and install your true preacher. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Fall fresh on us right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Shine. On me, O oh Lord, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me, O oh, shine. to the gospel according to John, gospel according to John, the ninth chapter, we'll begin reading at the first verse. Gospel according to St. John, chapter nine, we'll begin reading at the first verse. And it reads, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Mm -hmm. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me mm -hmm. while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is this not he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, he is like him, but he said, I am he. <laughs> Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes opened? Mm -hmm. He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay mm -hmm. and anointed mine eyes mm -hmm. and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received my sight. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to talk for the next few minutes on from the subject, Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the light of the world. Before we begin to examine our text, I must tell you that there is an intimate connection between John chapter 8 and John chapter 9. And when the Holy Spirit links two things together, it behooves us to pay close attention to the law of comparison and contrast. Mm -hmm. Uh, By comparison, one can closely relate John 8, 12 and John 9 and 5. Mm -hmm. Because in both verses, Jesus is revealed specifically as the light of the world. Not only uh, do these chapters present us with comparisons, but they also present us with a series of contrasts. For example, in chapter 8, we see Christ as the light exposing the darkness. Mm -hmm. But in chapter 9, we see Christ as he communicates sight. Mm -hmm. In chapter 8, the light, which is Jesus, is despised and rejected. But in chapter 9, the light is received and worshipped. In chapter 8, the Jews are seen stooping down to pick up stones to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. But in chapter 9, Jesus is seen stooping down to make anointing clay. In chapter 8, Jesus hides himself from the Jews. Mm -hmm. But in chapter 9, he reveals himself to the blind beggar. Mm -hmm. In chapter 8, we have a company in whom the word, which is Jesus, has no place. Mm -hmm. But in chapter 9, there is one who responds promptly to the word. Mm -hmm. In chapter 8, Jesus, while inside the temple, is called a demoniac. But in chapter 9, outside the temple, he is owned as Lord. The central truth of John 8 is the light, which is Jesus testing human responsibility. But in chapter 9, the central truth is God acting in sovereign grace after human responsibility has failed. So all I'm trying to say is when the Holy Spirit links two things together, Mm -hmm. it behooves us to pay close attention to the law of comparison and contrast. Mm -hmm. As we tiptoe towards our text this morning, we see Jesus walking and he sees a man who was blind from birth. Mm -hmm. And his disciples, who oftentimes spoke before they thought, said, ask Jesus, who did sin, this man or his parents, Mm -hmm. that he was born blind? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, neither this man or his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. He went on to say, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Uh, Then Jesus spits on the ground, makes a little ball of clay out of the spittle and anoints the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Jesus tells the blind man, go wash in the pool of Siloam. The blind man went his way, washed in the pool, and came seeing. Mm-hmm. As we look closely at the text, there is, there is some, something strange about this miracle that Jesus performs. Mm-hmm. The strange thing is that the blind man never asked Jesus to give him his sight. He never asked to see. It seems like Jesus just took this opportunity, if you will, to show off his power. Uh, This was Jesus' way of demonstrating that if he wants to, he can do whatever he pleases. Uh, 
Uh, th this blind man was sitting on the side of the road begging and he had no idea he was sitting in the path of his miracle. Uh, look at verse 2. Uh, the disciples assumed like most Jews of their day that sin was the primary if not the exclusive cause of all suffering mm -hmm. and believed while sin uh, may be the cause of suffering as clearly indicated in scripture, it is not always the cause necessarily. Mm -hmm. And in verse 3, Jesus made it clear that personal sin was not the reason for the blindness of this man. Well. And sadly, many of us today think as these disciples. We think that some people suffering their sickness and disease come as a result of some secret, unconfessed sin. Job's friends thought the same thing. After sitting with, the, with Job for a week in total silence, when they finally did open their mouths, they said, all right, Job, tell us the truth. What secret sin did you commit to cause yourself such great sorrow? But in our text today, Jesus tells his disciples that neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. This morning, I want to highlight four features of this blind man's healing. First, I want you to see the man's problem. The man's problem. Here is a man who has been blind since birth. He has never seen a sunrise. He's never seen a flower. He's never seen a tree, a bird, and he's never seen his parents. He has felt some things, touched some things, smelled some things, but has never seen anything. Yet somehow he makes his way to the main road of the city every day where he begs of those passing by. Mm -hmm. What a miserable way of life to beg of people for a living and depend upon them for survival. Mm -hmm. But apparently it did not bother this man because he does not beg the master for anything. He's not like the ten lepers who yelled out at Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's not like blind Bartimaeus who, yeah. who yells out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Yeah, He's not like the woman who came to Jesus because her daughter was vexed with a demon. Well. He was not like the woman with yeah. an issue of blood who yeah. grabbed Jesus' clothes. Well. He was not like well. Jairus who asked Jesus to come to his home to heal his daughter. Well, he is just sitting on the side of the road. Well, Jesus is passing by, yeah. sees him, and just feels like blessing him with his sight. Uh, this blind man is just in the way when Jesus decides to pass out a blessing. Well, and oh, my brothers and sisters, you should want to be in the way when the Lord decides to start passing out blessings. And I believe this morning, I believe this morning we are in the right place to receive a blessing and to receive a miracle from the Lord. But even in church, many people can miss their blessings. Because I've noticed in many churches that people leave before the benediction yeah, is given. Preacher, preacher, uh, don't preacher, you know preacher. that the benediction is the utterance or the bestowing of a blessing at the end of service? Mm -hmm. But some folk are so busy trying to get to their cars when the doors of the church are open, they yeah. miss their blessing yeah. by getting out of position. Yeah. So here is a blind man sitting on the side of the road begging, and he does not ask for anything because he does not know who Jesus is. 
The record says Jesus sees him, but this man cannot see Jesus. Then Jesus spits on the ground, makes a little ball of clay out of the spittle and puts it on the man's eyes. Putting clay of putting clay of spit on this man's eyes might have insulted this man if he had seen it. But Jesus does something for this man that he cannot see. He, he oftentimes uh, think and we oftentimes think and praise God for what we see. He has done, but we need to learn how to thank and praise God for what he does for us that we do not see. We don't see the robber that could have broken in on us last night as we slept. We, we don't see that negligent, we didn't see that negligent driver who could have uh, ran in head on to us this morning as we were on our way to church. Somebody ought to give God praise right now for God keeping us away from those things that we cannot see. Many of us have a because praise. We praise God because we have a job, because we have a family, because we have a roof over our head, because we have food on our table, because we have a little money in the bank, a retirement plan. But those are things we can see. But beloved, we need to learn how to praise God in spite of, in spite of a bad report from the doctor. In spite of my child is still on drugs out in the streets. In spite of my financial situation. In spite of being a single parent trying to make it on my own. God can bless you in spite of your sneaky supervisor, your conniving co-workers, and your frustrating frenemies. Psalm, Psalm 23 and 5 says... He prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anointed my head with oil, and, and when my enemies are trying to do me in, my cup runneth over. I praise God for what I see, but I've learned to praise God for what he's done for me, for what God has worked out for me that I cannot see. I thank God that he is moving right now on my behalf before I even know what needs to be done. That's like God providing a ram in the bush for Abraham on Mount Moriah. And it's like God sending Jesus to die for our sins before we ever knew we were sinners in need of a savior. God already knows what you need before you need it. So by the time you get to it, he has already worked it out. Uh, that's how you made it through cancer. Uh, that's how you made it through a heart attack. That's how you made it through a stroke. That's how you made it through a transplant. That's how you made it through an accident. That's how you made it all these years. God had already worked it out. That is God blessing you in spite of your low down, evil, hateful, conniving, good for nothing self. God's grace blesses us in spite of who we really are. So in the text, this man asks for nothing. Jesus just feels like giving him his sight. And I don't know about you, but I want to be in the way when Jesus just feels like passing out blessings. That's the problem of the man. Secondly, I want you to see the purpose of the man's blindness. The purpose of his blindness. Look at the latter part of verse 3. It says that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Jesus Christ is now ready to reveal himself in one of his I am statements. 
He says in the gospel of John several I am statements. Mm -hmm. He says, I am the bread of life. Yeah. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way. I am the truth and the life. Yes. I am the yes. true yes. vine. Yes. I am yes. the light yes. of the world. As we move along in the text, we see this blind man who receives a blessing from the Lord. Well. And this miracle is perhaps the only miracle that Jesus performs where he heals intermediately. Mm -hmm. He uses another agent to assist him in the miracle. Mm -hmm. If Jesus wanted to, he could have simply said to the man, receive your sight yes, sir. Yes, but instead he spits on the ground well, makes a little ball of clay out of the spittle well, puts it on the man's eyes and says go wash in the pool of Siloam mm -hmm. Jesus has already made up in his mind that he was going to heal him mm -hmm. but the man had to participate yes, in his own miracle praise you, praise you, praise you. beloved God wants to bless you with a job but you need to go and fill out the application. God wants to bless you with a house, but you need to keep up the maintenance and, and, and clean up the apartment that you're staying in right now. Uh, God wants to give you a new car, but he wants you to keep up that hoop that you're driving now. God wants to bless you, but sometimes you have to be willing to participate in your own blessing. So first we see this man's problem. Secondly, we see the purpose of the man's blindness. And thirdly, we see the power of a sovereign God. Look at verse 6 and 7. And let's go over it one more time, if you will. Jesus spits on the ground, makes a little ball of clay out of the spittle, and anoints the man's eyes with the clay. Then in verse 7, Jesus tells the man, go. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went, and the man washed, and the man came seeing. The blind man obeyed the command of Jesus. He went, he washed, and he came seeing. If you want to be blessed, you have to obey the word of the Lord. Simon Peter found this to be true in Luke 5. You remember Jesus comes to the lake of Gennesaret, saw two ships. The fishermen were cleaning their nets. Jesus entered Simon's ship and asked him to thrust out a little from the shore. Jesus sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Then when Jesus finished speaking, he told Simon to launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draught. And, and Simon informs Jesus that they had fished all night and taken nothing. But there, but here is where Simon received his blessing. He told Jesus, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he did as the word said, do. The record says they enclosed a great number of fishes, so many that their nets began to break and they had to call their partners from the other ship to help. Uh, they filled both ships with so many fishes that the ships began to sink. When you obey the word of God, your blessings will overflow to the point that you will have to call somebody and tell them, come over here and get some of this overflow. God does not bless us so that we can hold on to a penny so tight that it makes Washington holler. But God blesses us that we may be a blessing to somebody else. Well, first we see this man's problem. Secondly, we see 
the purpose of the man's blindness. Thirdly, we see the power of a sovereign master. Mm -hmm. And finally, we see the perplexity of an unbelieving people. Look at verse 8 and following. The record says, When some of the neighbors of the healed man saw him, they said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. And others said, He is like him. But the healed man said, I am he. So they asked him, How? Were thine eyes opened? Mm -hmm. He answered and said that a man named Jesus made clay, Mm -hmm. anointed my eyes with the clay, and told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went, I washed, and when I came back, (laughs) I was seen. Now I need to tell you that This was on the Sabbath when Jesus worked this miracle. And according to Jewish law, no work was to be done on the Sabbath. So the Pharisees, the rulers of the synagogue, or the church folk, called the man's parents and said, Listen here, if you don't want to be thrown out of this church, you better tell us how did this boy get his sight. And the record says the parents who did not want to upset the powers that be, lest they be excommunicated from the church, said, we don't know. Uh, They said, ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. So they called the man in and asked him, how did you get your sight? And he said, a man named Jesus told me to go. I went, I washed, and I came back seeing. The Pharisee said, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. Don't give Jesus no credit. Don't give him no glory because he is a sinner. If you give anybody glory, give it to God. Jesus is a sinner. Don't glorify him. If you don't want us to put you out of this church, don't give Jesus the glory. But this man, not being intimidated like his parents, said, I don't know who he is. He he very well could be exactly who you say he is. I don't know whether he is a sinner or not, but one thing I do know. Whereas I was blind, now I see. They told the boy, get out of here. And he said, that's fine. And he left them and followed Jesus. Sadly, this morning, my Christian friends, this kind of behavior of the holier than thou's in our churches caused people to walk away from the church. They still love Jesus, but they don't like church folk. Because when dealing with church folk, you have to deal with all kinds of attitudes. And you, and you got to answer questions, all kinds of questions. Uh, and you got to walk through all these people staring at you and all these folk talking about you who really ain't no better than you. And if the truth be told, everybody on every seat in here right now, including the one sitting in your seat, got some issues they're struggling with right now. Got some problems they can't solve right now. Got some conditions they wish they could get out of right now. Church folk, you need to stop acting like you are so holy you got to question everybody's spirituality and you got to inspect everybody's fruit to see whether or not they are full of the spirit. You ought to be thankful that God adopted you in the family. 
Stop being critical of those who we know are actively sinning because, uh, because none of us could stand being followed by a camera 24 hours a day. Well, 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 well. Uh, if so, we might be able to start a new reality show, Housewives or House Husbands of Capitol uh, Heights here. Well, well, I, I don't know. If, I know for sure I can't stand an investigation well, of my past. If so, well, I would be confined to the very pits of hell right now. My Lord, my Lord. But thank God, uh, Jesus does not bring up our past. Well, he does not ask you any questions. Well, he doesn't try to inspect anything going on in your life. Well, well. The man said he might be everything you say. All I know, all I know, where as I was blind, now I see. This, this man was now a witness of what the Lord can do. And you know a witness can only testify to what they know. Uh, they can only testify to what they see. Uh, are there any witnesses here in New Jerusalem today who can testify about what the Lord has done for you? Is there anybody here who can testify about what they know the Lord can do? I don't know about you, but I know he's a burden bearer. I know he's a heavy load carrier. I know he's a hard fixer. I know he's a mind regulator. I know he's a way maker. I know he's a doctor who's never lost a patient. I know he's a lawyer who's never lost a case. I know he can make a way out of no way. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. And the joy we share. As we tarry there, none other has ever known. Well, I was going to end my sermon right there. I was going to end right there, but, but I got an email from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told me, said, Stephen, you told the people about the problem. You told the people about the purpose. You told the people about the power and the perplexity. But you need to tell them one more thing. You need to tell them about the praise. Remember I told you that when this man left the synagogue, he went following Jesus. And all the while he was following Jesus. He was thanking, worshiping, and praising him for what he had done in his life. And I want to know, is there anybody in here today who just wants to praise him for all he's done in your life? The Bible says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with string instruments. And praise him with the organs. Praise him upon the loud sounding cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise, 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 praise the Lord. I can hear this young man praising God through a song right now. I can hear him saying amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found was blind, was blind.
standing at the door of your heart. Can you see him? And he's not. He's not going to kick the door down. He's not. No, not one. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Will you come, unchurched, unsaved? Jesus is tenderly calling. Unchurched, unsaved. blessings upon his waiting people. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, it's once again that we come before you with bowed heads and humble hearts, thanking you for your grace, your love, and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for our lying down last night and our rising up this morning. We realize that somebody laid down last night that didn't get up this morning. And Lord, we want to thank you for another beautiful day, a gift from you, this day that you have given to us. Lord, we ask your blessings to continue to be upon New Jerusalem Baptist Church. Upon this, your manservant, Dr. Henderson and his wife, Lord. Keep them under thy care. Lord, we pray for the leadership of this church and for all of its members that are here and away. Lord, we ask your continued healing to be upon Minister Campbell, Lord, and we just ask that you be with his wife and his family, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless the two sons of the house who will be coming forward to give their trial sermons, Lord. Give them a word from you, Lord, that you were already, that your word is already blessed. This have, this give them boldness, Lord, to stand before your people and to deliver your word to your waiting congregation. Lord, we ask your blessings upon this world, Lord, going through so much right now, and we just ask your blessings upon our house. 
the state house, the courthouse, the schoolhouse, and especially the White House. Lord, we thank you because we know that you can, because we know that you have all power in your hand. So, Lord, now we ask that you come within our hearts. Show us the right way, Lord. Lead us and guide us. Direct us in every direction that you would have us to go. Lord, many of us are standing in the need of prayer. Health problems and financial problems. And problems with children and problems with spouses and all kind of family problems. Lord, we know you are a problem solver. So do what you do best right now, Lord. That is, have your way in our lives. Lord, work it out for us right now. Keep us right now, Lord. Heal us right now, Lord. Make a way right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Certainly, we want to thank God for it that glorious message that we heard and as we wrap things up this afternoon uh, let's remember to come out uh, later this afternoon to a uh, three o'clock service to hear the initial message of our uh, beloved deacon deacon anthony eugene harris i thank god for this preacher today though and i want to say to you that this preacher, he's no ordinary preacher. He's no ordinary preacher. He's a wonderfully blessed preacher. Uh, he has uh, shared the word of God with us before. And I, I, I've been in the ministry for 30 years. I'm on the staff of the Washington Baptist Seminary. have been there for over 34 years in various capacities. And I'm telling you, this preacher, he... he He's exceptionally blessed, and uh, I pray that God will continue to strengthen him and guide him. I don't, I don't know where God is taking him. What I do know that he's going to get him there, wherever he's taking him. He keep doing what he's doing. He's going to get him there. But thank you so much, preacher, for coming and sharing with us today. And uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to stand at this time. And to be dismissed. And once again, I'd like to thank Pastor Henderson for allowing me to come and preach once again. And I heard him say about he, his birthday, wish him happy birthday and happy anniversary. All these cakes and pies he got out. I tell people when you get my size, one more slice of pie, not gonna hurt you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let us look to the Lord and be dismissed. Lord God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, may your grace, may your love, may the communion of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Sure.